The world has recently been obsessed with zombies, but could a zombie apocalypse really happen in real life? Welcome to Terror 5. In 2011, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, published a blog titled Preparedness 101 a Zombie Apocalypse to raise public awareness of emergency preparedness. But is a zombie apocalypse really possible? Today we'll be listing 5 most possible and scientific ways a zombie apocalypse could happen. Number 5 are neurotoxins. In 1962, a guy named Clairvus Narcis was declared dead by not just one doctor, but two. He was buried in Haiti, but 18 years later, people found him wandering around the village. It seems the local voodoo priest had used a chemical found in nature and brought him back to life to work on sugar plantations. What caused this to happen were neurotoxins, like the ones found on blowfish, that can and will reanimate a human. These alkaloids slows bodily functions to the point that the person appears dead. The poison will revive that person and bring them back to life in a trance-like state. They will have no memory and will only be able to perform simple tasks, thus taking on the form of the walking dead. Number 4 is Mad Cow Disease There have always been a number of brain disorders that can turn a person violent. However, they have also never been contagious until humans encountered mad cow disease. The illness, also known as bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSC for short, is a virus that attacks a cow's nervous system, causing it to act strangely and lose control of its natural ability to do normal things, essentially becoming mentally ill. When humans eat the meat and is transmitted, they call it Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. Some of the symptoms include changes in how the affected person walks, hallucinations, lack of coordination, muscle twitching, and seizures. If mad cow disease got out of control and it turned our delirium into rage and could be transmitted by blood, well then, humans are just a bite away from a zombie apocalypse. Number 3 are fungi. Ophiocordyceps is a genus of parasitic fungus whose species attack different species of insects in the jungles of Africa. For ants, the fungus infects the insect and quickly spreads throughout its body. Fungal cells in the ant's head release chemicals that hijacks the insect's central nervous system. The fungus forces the ant to climb up vegetation and clamp down onto a leaf or twig before killing its hapless drone. It then grows a spore-releasing stalk out of the back of the victim's head to infect more ants on the ground below. If you ask if Ophiocordyceps fungus could eventually evolve and infect humans, well, that's the plot of the post-apocalyptic game, The Last of Us. Number 2 are Brain Parasites Parasites that infect the brain and turn its souls into mindless, zombie-like slaves are fairly common in nature. There is a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii that lives in rats and can only breed inside the intestines of a cat. The parasites take over the rat's brain to get itself eaten and spread the virus. So how can this cause a zombie apocalypse? Well, scientists say that half of the human population is already infected with toxoplasma, and all it would take is a mild evolution for it to do to us what it does to rats. It is not so far-fetched as rats are pretty close to humans, and that is why they are using these rodents in medical testing. Number 1 are Nanobots Nanobots are devices constructed of nanoscale or molecular components ranging in size from 0.1 to 10 micrometers. These microscopic self-replicating robots can invisibly build or destroy anything. According to studies, within a decade, scientists will have created nanobots capable of crawling inside the human brain and creating neural connections to replace damaged ones. It will be able to rewire your innermost thoughts and will be programmed to keep you functioning after you die. Experts predict that someday, microscopic nanobots will have sufficiently evolved 
to end civilization by flooding the planet with the cannibalistic undead. We know that some of you are dying to see the real-life zombie outbreak, only to use those baseball bats we all love. Anyway, like in any worst case scenario, we all must look for a place to strategically establish. Unless you're willing to join the flesh-eating crowd without opposing resistance. Here we are going to give you some ideas of where to go if this ever happens, sooner or later. This is the top countdown of the 15 best places to hide during the zombie apocalypse. Number 15, a bank. A bank could be a good temporary place to hide for a few days. Most of the banks have one strong entrance and can be electronically sealed. Banks used to be fully monitored by cameras, and for extreme safety, you can sleep in the main vault. However, this should be only an immediate option before leaving town. All banks are placed in populated areas, and you would have to go searching for food from time to time. And hey, we haven't figured out any recipe with money as its main ingredient. Number 14, Mountain Mine. A mine could be a good place to hide during an outbreak, but you should have control over all the entrances to make it safe. Abandoned mines can bring additional dangers. Some mines actually have air filters and water purifiers, so you won't have to worry about that. A strategic mine should be located in a low-dense populated area, far from urban complexes and near to self-sustainable food sources like farms. You would have to go out during the days to collect food. But anyhow, if you are near the field, you can plant food by your own means. Number 13, Natural Cave. Similar to the mountain mines, these would provide safe places to hide, especially if they're fully explored. However, like in the previous case, entrances would have to be fortified, and most important, you will have to watch out that the cave you choose is not an actual household of an enraged bear. Number 12, High Mountain. Now, low temperatures might be helpful to disable the undead, but also are places where the shortage of food would represent a problem. In any case, high mountains are mostly inhabited, so that would mean the possibility to live while the zombie problem spreads in different areas. Number 11, Lighthouse. A lighthouse indeed is a safe place, surrounded by water and with a high point that gives you a panoramic view. It still has the limitation of space, so you better choose friendly companions to hide there with you. However, it can be a good alternative during the nights, unless zombies learn how to swim. I hope they don't. You won't be worrying too much about security. Number 10, ship. This is one of the best alternatives to skate hide during a zombie outbreak. You will be out of reach from all of the flesh eaters in the ground. Some ships have water desalination devices. You would only have to descend to Earth from time to time in order to collect food. Alternatively, you will be able to search for safe inhabited places. But be aware that you are not traveling with infected passengers. Number 9. Bridge Think about a huge bridge, with both entrances blown to make it completely isolated. It would still be near to food sources like malls or supermarkets because you still would have to scavenge for food in the nearest town. But it should provide you with a safe, nearly unreachable place to live. If it has plenty of space, maybe you could be a pioneer managing to cover a portion of it with earth and plant some food. Number 8. Missile Silo Similar to a bunker, the missile silo provides the perfect place to hide. Several floors on the underground and a secure perimeter. All silos are well fortified and placed in natural areas where little to no human beings are living, as some of them are packaged to serve as houses for scientifics and militaries. These may have beds and food. Just make sure that the missiles are in optimum conditions or search for an abandoned missile silo instead. Number seven, safe houses. Some modern houses are built with special features that make them true fortresses. Fully automated to be sealed with metal coverage for windows and doors, safe houses represent the new expression of being prepared for the worst possible situation. Although these might be expensive, you can take someone else's safe house if he or she was not fortunate to reach it in time. Number six, farm. 
Build four walls to secure the perimeter, and you got it. The safest place to be. Choose a farm with a source of water, a pit maybe. Farms are located far from the cities, and that makes them excellent places to be during an outbreak. The eventual casualties would be considerably low, and you won't be worrying about going out for food. Number five, military base. Similar to the missile silo, the military bases are good hiding places. If you love to eat canned food, you'd have lots of ammo and guns to protect the perimeter and hopefully would be mostly out of the range if the base is placed far from past civilizations. Anyway, you should make sure that people don't get crazy with the guns or you'll be facing bigger problems than zombies. Enraged people with guns. Number four, castle. History is always wise. If castles serve their purpose to let people protect themselves from hordes of enemies who thirst for blood, these places would do the same, even if the threat is from the undead. Some castles are just like big fortified farms, so you would be saving time in building the walls and using it, planting some food instead. Number three, jail. Jails are supposed to be safe, so you should give them a try. Many people can be staying there, and if they are big enough, you won't be worried about privacy. The real problem during an outbreak is to make them vacate. Who's going to enter first and let the inmates out? Albeit, if you look for the minimal security complex in Norway, you'll be staying in a luxury hotel, but that would be no help containing the undead. Number 2. Sea Platforms for Oil Extraction these man-made islands are far from the coast and are nearly indestructible. If you are passionate by fishing, then this would be the best option. Live like a sailor in the middle of the sea and never worry again about the zombies. Even if they learn how to swim, there are only a few ways to enter into these and some of them are only reachable by air. And these constructions are suspended above water level. Number 1. Island if you are looking for the ultimate escape for the zombie carnage, you should be searching for a far-off civilization by way of an island. That's your best option. You would have food, water, and also a place to build your home. Some islands even offer you only one entrance. And the best part is that there are still many islands not touched by the hand of man. So you have plenty to choose. Number 10. Home Fortress Prepper for most zombie apocalypse preppers, the home fortress is going to be their main strategy for obvious reasons. No one wants to leave the comfort of their own home even during a crisis situation. This zombie apocalypse survival strategy, however, is going to be somewhat difficult to sustain for a long period of time. Preppers will need to stock up on large amounts of food, fresh water, toilet paper, exercise equipment, and of course, equipment to protect themselves with. Guns and ammunition will need to be stored in a safe place and you'll need to practice regularly by going to the firing range. This might be one of the better strategies on the list, but every strategy will have a downfall. Food supplies will eventually run low, running water most likely won't exist, and having power generators kind of makes you a target. The best way to make the home fortress strategy work is to lie low, be cautious of outsiders even if they're your friends, invest in low-key security cameras, and use as little of your stored resources as possible. Number 9. Hideout Dwellers While staying in your own home and trying to tough it out might work for some, Others would prefer to relocate somewhere where zombies can't reach them. The hideout dweller secretly constructs their hideout in places like mountains or on islands and gradually stocks supplies here, just in case. This will ultimately require a vehicle that you'll carefully select to properly handle the terrain and get there safely. Check our best vehicles for the zombie apocalypse video if you need some ideas. People who are serious about their hideout need to make sure their hiding place is accessible and that a path to get there isn't being blocked by trees. Having your route memorized is imperative, considering that it's unsure of whether or not GPS will be working. Somewhere like a secret cave in the mountains or an abandoned missile silo would be a great place to start. Number 8. Hunters and Survivalists Normally, people who didn't prepare too well and live in rural areas are going to have to resort to living like we did tens of thousands of years ago. This means that they're going to have to rely on hunting their own food. Many of us have never even picked up a gun, let alone having to deal with the violence of killing our own food. People are going to have to realize that living in the wilderness is no picnic, and you certainly won't be roasting marshmallows during the apocalypse. This is going to require a little more mental stability and research on what plants are safe to eat in order to survive. It's not zombies coming at you from all sides you're going to have to just worry about. You're going to need to learn how to react when you make contact with deadly predators around you. 
It'll certainly be a tough way to survive that'll take much prior research, and many people don't like this survival strategy. A survivalist like Bunny Hunter, however, as you see in this photo, might choose this style of living during the zombie apocalypse. Number 7. Cultivators In order to repopulate mankind back to the way it was before the zombie apocalypse struck, we're going to need skilled cultivators who know what they're doing. This would also work in a rural area with open fields, but you've also got to choose your land carefully. For this strategy, it's best to store a large variety of seeds that will someday be useful. Just focus primarily on things you can eat. This definitely goes best coupled with something like the hideout strategy and should not be relied on as your only source of food. Weather is unpredictable and who knows if zombies will come by and eat your beautiful tomato plants, mistaking them for brains. When picking a hideout, consider having some land ready to be cultivated, but also be prepared in case of ultimate failure of your crops. Number 6. Looters Looters will basically become every zombie survivalist's worst nightmare, even more so than zombies possibly. Another possibility of surviving the apocalypse, however, will be by looting other people's settlements, hideouts, and crops. This will probably be the most common strategy employed by criminals or people with police or military backgrounds. They could also become the biggest threat to restoring any civility during the apocalypse. A doomsday prepper by the name of Tyler Smith had already began a group known as the Spartan Survival Group, who had roughly 80 members that stocked up on things like ammunition, weapon, and body armor. Now, if you're considering going this route and starting your own looting survival group, be sure to consider that you might loot a few houses successfully, but other preppers will have traps, remote detonated explosives around their house, just waiting for no good looters like yourself to dare coming near their home fortress. We should also add that Tyler was arrested for illegal weapons possessions. Number 5. Inventors and Scientists Mankind has used tools since they had the brain capacity to figure out that a rock would make a good hammer. Creative minds will still be put to use, even if zombies are trying to eat them. You might have thought people who had their own laboratories in their basement were crazy until the apocalypse arrives. These people strive hard to come up with the best ways to survive that the average prepper doesn't. A prepper by the name of Liu Qiuan came up with something that's been known as the Great Ball of China or what he calls the Noah's Ark, in order to survive the apocalypse. This thing can survive the strength of a tsunami, the cold temperatures of the Arctic, and even debris from an earthquake. So we're guessing it should be safe against zombies. Should. It's airtight with oxygen masks and plenty of food and water and even a seatbelt. Inventors and scientists will be able to barter goods for sharing their survival ideas. Number 4. Economists Once some order is restored after the zombie apocalypse and the initial panic has subsided, some type of currency will be put to use. Your paper currency is probably best used as toilet paper at this point, but certain preppers will be ready for the barter system to take over. Stocking up on certain things now, like batteries, nails, and toilet paper, might seem a little bit ridiculous, but who knows someday? The economist specifically stocks up on supplies in order to become rich through the barter system. In order to get a good look at what might be valuable during the apocalypse, you can understand better by seeing what's used as currency in prison. Things like top ramen noodles are now a commodity of choice, but other things like mackerels, homemade wine, cigarettes, and weapons are all worth a lot in prison. It's known that some packs of cigarettes have sold for $500 behind prison walls. Other things like silver and copper coins containing valuable metals have been specifically minted for the zombie apocalypse like you see in this photo. It's called Zombucks. It's difficult to say what exactly will have the most value, but things like fuel, seeds, medicine, bleach, and things to start fire with are good places to start. Number 3. Scavengers Scavenging is similar to looting in a way, but these survivors don't want to put themselves in as much danger as the looters and go for more commercial areas. Of course, no one wants to become a scavenger, but it's the apocalypse and not everyone properly prepared. This might not be the worst strategy either and requires little to no time preparing. There will be a lot to gain from scavenging. For this one, you still probably need supplies in order to become the best possible scavenger. Supplies like bags, batteries, and flashlights are all crucial. Be careful in choosing your bag, since you want something that can be moved quickly. More skilled scavengers will have talents breaking in and entering. Places like museums, abandoned warehouses, pharmacies, hospitals, gun stores, police stations, camping stores, and many places will be all targets. Be careful, however, when scavenging refrigerated items, since there's a good chance they spoiled. You and your crew might come across some zombies or other scavengers, but your main goal should be to remain undetected. Number 2. Mole People While most people will probably end up living above ground, there are those who choose to live underground or in caves. This choice is somewhat drastic, but there's a good chance you'll go undetected by looters and zombies if you choose this prepping strategy. It's quite surprising to see what some humans are capable of creating underground. Things like entire cities are possible in the right area. 
Many people have invested millions of dollars in their private underground bunkers, but for the less fortunate ones in highly populated areas, places like subway systems become a last resort. Once the zombies have left the station, it can be easily secured with proper equipment. There also might be plenty of furry little food sources running around. And number one, zombie teams. While preparing for the zombie apocalypse, it's easy to see how resources will go longer without as many mouths to feed, but trying to be the lone survivor is not recommended. Surviving by yourself would be possible, of course, but many questions arise about how one's mental health would be after lacking socializing during such a traumatic event. This is one reason why you need a zombie team. It's preferable to have an extra set of ears, eyes, and specialties while looking out for zombies. Choosing a team isn't always easy either. You have to see which type of surviving suits you best. You might not find out exactly who someone truly is until the apocalypse goes down.
cities during the zombie apocalypse but first thanks Adam for leaving us this great suggestion we're starting to get the hint that you guys want more zombie videos leave us your suggestion for a zombie video we haven't made already and maybe we'll make it number 11 Buffalo New York not all cities are created equal when it comes to surviving the zombie apocalypse. Some are well equipped with medical centers, food and water sources, access to weapons, and so on. Buffalo, New York is located very close to an excellent source of clean, flowing water. Lake Erie and Niagara Falls will provide residents with the luxury of having clean water during the apocalypse, which will be, of course, an essential asset. Buffalo is also ranked as having the fifth best food supply in the U.S. Due to it being on the border with Canada, there are Coast Guard stations or gun depots that might be available for looting weapons, boats, or other resources. Or maybe the Coast Guard will protect you, who knows? The water should also become a valuable boundary against attacking zombies. Number 10. Key West, Florida 
Key West has quite a bit going for it considering it being such a small place. Not only is it completely separated from the mainland, it's also the most southern point in the continental US. There's only one way in and out of Key West by land, and if the citizens do their part, they can block the one freeway into Key West and prevent brain-eating zombies from coming in. Food should be plentiful since the surrounding waters are filled with fish. The area has the right conditions for cultivating citrus plants that will ensure a well-balanced diet. The U.S. Coast Guard at this location does a decent job from letting in Cuban migrants, so hopefully they can do the same with invading zombies. With a naval air station close by, this city is well prepared for a tough fight against the undead. Number 9. Zurich, Switzerland Tucked away in the Alps, you better hope zombies don't learn to climb mountains. First of all, it's pretty much the only country in Europe where everyone owns a gun. Fresh alpine water is found all over this country, including Zurich. And many lakes might need very little, if any, purification to be drinkable. It's nearly a half a mile above sea level, and there's a potential hideout location in every Alp cabin you come across. Lake Zurich, located next to the city, is extremely clean and needs very little treatment before it's potable. While everyone else is being infected with flesh-eating viruses, you can enjoy the views of the Swiss Alps. Don't forget to pick up a handy-dandy authentic Swiss army knife while you're here. Number 8. Copenhagen, Denmark Many people know that Denmark has been revered as one of the best countries to live. However, the mainland seems a tad vulnerable to zombie attacks, especially from Nazi zombies from the south. This is why they should consider moving to Copenhagen. The city of Copenhagen is on an island with plenty of agriculture and fresh water. With only three bridges and tunnels connecting them to the mainland of Europe, Copenhagen could essentially isolate themselves fairly easily in case of a shutdown situation. Copenhagen is also well prepared for an outbreak and pride themselves with having an extremely high standard of healthcare in hospitals. Plenty of high bell towers also make for great sniping vantage points. Number 7. Houston, Texas To be clear, being in any large metropolitan area during the zombie apocalypse is dangerous, but Houston, Texas certainly has its advantage over other big cities in the U.S. Of course, being in America where guns outnumber people, you shouldn't find it too difficult to come across a gat. If you're running out of fuel, Texas also might be a great place to go. There are many natural oil deposits in this area, and the city might have enough excess fuel storage to generate electricity, and you can also refuel your vehicle. The virus is more likely to spread quicker in densely populated areas like in New York, LA, and Chicago. Luckily, Houston is far away from all three of these zombie vulnerable places. Zombies don't want to mess with Texas. Number 6. Douglas, Isle of Man the Isle of Man is located right between Ireland and England, and this could be a strategic location during the zombie apocalypse, especially if London becomes infected like in the film 28 Days Later. The city of Douglas has a population of about 27,000 people, and they've relied on boats to get them around since people began settling this island. During the apocalypse, we can imagine big cities like Dublin or London becoming infected. Many defensive structures as well as lighthouses can be found along the coast side, which can eventually be turned into strongholds if needed. That is, if zombies can even make it to this island. Number 5. Carcassonne, France If you're somewhere in France and the zombie apocalypse strikes, consider coming to the city of Carcassonne, located in southwestern France. The medieval Cité de Carcassonne will become the perfect stronghold for fighting off hordes of the undead. This was once a thriving trading post that's fortified with over 50 towers, and the walls can reach about 30 feet high. Being a UNESCO World Heritage Site, it's still in great condition to this day. Equipped with a drawbridge, the people inside can decide who they want to let in. Even against looters during the apocalypse, this fortification could prove to be extremely effective. There's also plenty of space outside the city walls for farming, but just be careful. Number 4. Montreal, Canada One of the more populated areas on this list, Montreal is surrounded by water, and if they spend enough time, they could barricade the entries into the city. Mount Royal, located on the heart of the island, makes for a great lookout location to spot potential brain eaters. Canadians don't own guns, but there should be no shortage of hockey sticks to swing at the undead. Hockey gear like the gloves and the masks could prove to be extremely useful equipment while fighting off the undead. Certainly, once winter hits, the zombies won't be able to handle the cold weather and simply freeze, although there is some debate on this theory. Keep Montreal as an option when relocating, but be sure to keep on practicing your French. You won't have any problems finding maple syrup, which has an extremely long shelf life and should give you a little extra energy for swinging your melee weapons of choice making a great zombie food also. Number 3. Valletta, Malta The fact that the city of Valletta is already on an island is a great start. After being invaded many times by numerous different people, the island of Malta has an extensive number of fortifications. The strategic location has made it desired by many different powers, and if zombies decide to come in, 
there will be an extremely large number of fortified places to hide. Here we see Fort Manoel, built by the Knights of St. John. It was slightly damaged during World War II, but restored and back in fighting condition. Every strategic location of the city is fortified, including St. Andrew's Bastion. At the very tip of the harbor stands Fort St. Elmo, which withstood a siege by the Ottomans for 28 days. Number 2. Longyearbyen Longyearbyen is the world's most northern city, and they certainly seem to be ready for the apocalypse. If you can withstand the cold, this place may be completely untouched by the zombie apocalypse due to its isolation. The residents here are well trained with firearms since they have to deal with relentless polar bear attacks. If they can fight off polar bears, they should be able to fight off zombies. Should. The island of Svalbard is also where you'll find the Global Sea Vault, which houses a large variety of seeds that could potentially restore food supplies. The seeds are stored here in case of an event like the apocalypse, and the island could become quite wealthy from the barter system. At number one, but first, some honorable mentions. Boston, Massachusetts, for its high concentration of microbiologists, making it likely to find a cure there. Cheyenne, Wyoming, for it being in a desolate region, with one of the lowest amount of people per capita in the United States. Virginia Beach, for it being well equipped for defense and a heavy military presence. And Tristan de Cunha, for its complete isolation. At number one, Denver, Colorado. Making your escape to the Rocky Mountains almost seems like a surefire bet in escaping the zombie apocalypse for numerous reasons. Being a mile high above sea level, it will make it quite difficult for zombies trying to creep up on the city. While densely populated cities will spread the virus quickly, Denver is well spread out, with many people living in the nearby suburbs. It could take months for the virus to possibly spread to the Rocky Mountains, which is some of the most difficult terrain to navigate in North America. Once you've made it to Denver and stocked up on supplies, you can consider heading west to places more secluded like Aspen and take over a skiing cabin to hide out. With many large houses that will likely have plenty of supplies and plenty of trees nearby, you'll find yourself quite a few resources to start fires and plenty of wildlife to hunt for food. A large number of skilled technicians in environmental and electrical fields working in Denver, however, should keep the city up and running even after the virus has began spreading.